But what do we look at when we look at the contour from the facial aspect of the tooth? I want you to take a look at one thing. I want you to take a look at the line angles or the height of contours both on the mesial and the distal. As you can see from the next slide, what's most common with maxillary central incisors is that the mesial line angle will be fairly straight while the distal line angle will be fairly convex. So despite the shape of the central incisor, whether it be ovoid in shape, triangular shape, or square shape, we tend to see the same effect of the line angles. That is on the mesial, it's going to be straighter, and on the distal, it's going to be more convex. So you'll see on this slide where I show the ovoid shape, the triangular shape, and square shape, the, the line angles tend to be straighter on the mesial and be more convex, more curved on the distals. Now, it's not only critical to view your tooth from the facial, which is most common for us when we're in our, doing our dental practice, but I think what's even more critical is to look at the, your, your contour from the incisal or from the occlusal view. This, in fact, was one of the biggest mistakes I had when I first started doing direct resin bonding. I was not evaluating the shape and contour from the incisal. I was really looking only from the facial. So it's critical that we use these other views that are going to be able to give us supplemental information that's going to allow us to identify the height of contours in these line angles to a much better understanding and be able to create tooth form that is much more natural. So you'll see on the next slide, when you've developed the proper line angles, there's going to be light reflective and light deflective zones. In this slide, you'll see how where the line angles have been created on the mesial and the distal, light is reflecting into the interproximal from those line angles, and through the mid-facial, light is being reflected back at us. This is how you can control the perceived width of the tooth by being able to manipulate those line angles. Many of us have had these occasions where we've recreated a central incisor, perhaps doing a class four fracture repair or doing a veneer, and we look at the central incisor and it looks too wide compared to the neighboring central incisor. Typically, it is the line angles haven't been well defined enough to be able to create the proper form. That gives us the light deflected zones and the light reflective zones which helps us to be able to visualize the contour and the, and the width of the tooth. Okay, so the way that I work with my pencil, after I have the initial contour, I don't necessarily run my pencil along the side to highlight the contours I've developed. More commonly what I'll do is I'll draw where I want the contour. So on the, uh, with the sharp edge of the pencil, on the mesos we talked about, it's gonna be a straighter line but on the distal, it's going to be more of a contour, and I'm looking for where I want the height of contour to be developed. It is in, within the lines, is going to be the facial anatomy, and proximal to those lines that I drew is where I'm going to develop those deflective light zones, or interproximal contour. Okay. All right, so let's do that together. Now, this course disc is great for taking off excess composite. Be careful because it will remove composite quite readily, and you want to run this disc at a sort of a medium to slow speed so you don't be too aggressive with taking off the excess composite unless you have a significant excess. After I have the coarse disc completed, then I'm going to go to the blue disc. Now, this is the disc that I use most commonly in my practice. I especially use the small blue disc and you'll notice that I have the cutting surface of the disc facing the handpiece. When you're working with the blue disc, you want to be careful not to use or use, lose your line angle. So most commonly, I'm going to work the blue disc from the contour, the height of contour, just gently in to the proximal. Now be careful because we don't want to open up a contact, so you want to do that very gently. These blue discs are also great for working around the cervical margin to smooth those off. And again, just making sure that we're really highlighting the line angle, and really bringing in those light deflective zones. 